Hello, today we're going to be taking a look at the TLCLC. It is an RGB version of the fan. So let's get right into it. So a little bit of cross comparison against a lot of other uh, thermal right fans. So I also have the A12X25. You can pause here and take a look at the different data in terms of how the fan ranks compared to its brethren, as I'm going to say, or we're going to just move on. So here's the spec information, flow dynamic varying. It's maximum RPM, the airflow rate, static pressure, noise level, and we're going to verify it based on my own testing methodology. Okay, bringing it in. This is the fan. It's got uh, an extender for, uh, not an extender, but, uh, oh, I'm off camera, a second fan header so you can uh, daisy chain them together with ease without needing to plug it into your motherboard, which is nice. It's fairly common these days, but I still want to point that out. And then you got your RGB header with the same sort of extender so that you can daisy chain the RGB uh, together between the fans. And this is the way the fan looks. All right, this is the way the RGB looks for this fan. Right now it is just in rainbow mode. I'm adjusting my focus to be more on the light so we can see that a little bit better. Let's go ahead and see how it looks in a solid format. There's the solid color. Let's see if I can adjust the focus a little bit to count the number of lights. Well, I think I was counting eight there. If you count a different number, please let me know. Basically, it's each of those bright little dots, and I think I counted eight of them. So that allows for a good amount of color mixing. So most cheaper fans have like six, more expensive ones tend to have eight, and higher ones have even more. So overall, it is your choice. If you like the way the RGB looks, let's take a quick look at the back to see how its appearance looks. Uh, overall, pretty basic. So not going to win any beauty contests there. So let's move on to... All right, so what can we say about it? Well, it's got a little bit of rubber padding around the edges. It's not removable, uh, so it's probably just double-sided uh, sticky taped in, basically. But it's perfectly adequate to take care of minor vibrations uh, going from the fan into the case. Uh, a little bit of an inlet there that the fans sweep over. There's a little bit of a distance between the uh, tip of the blade and the housing, so it should do okay in a pull configuration. Uh, I can't quite recall how it sounded in uh, the actual testing that we performed um, that we saw only a few minutes ago, but for me it's been a couple days. Uh, the back of it, you'll see these are fairly swept. So one of the reasons that these are so swept is because you want to minimize the interaction between the blade and one of these struts. So the larger the interaction is, so if these were actually sweeped the other direction, this fan would be significantly noisier. So doing that just helps minimize the noise. The struts themselves are not aerodynamic. The frame on it is squared off, so you could stack the fans next to each other. So it'll create a nice pressure seal overall. And now the blade design. So looking at the blades, they are fairly close to the edge of the housing, which is good to see. You want that as close as possible because it's good for pressure scenarios. The balance on this is actually kind of wobbly. I'm not pushing that hard. The blades are also fairly flexible. Now that is a little bit of a problem because it means that they're more likely to have vibration frequencies or harmonics, as I like to call it. Um, if uh, it runs at the wrong frequency, so hopefully that is nicely balanced and that you will never experience a harmonic, but I'm just commenting about it. The overall blade shape is more like an airflow fan. It has these large gaps without too much overlap between the uh, blade behind it and the front blade. So basically it just wouldn't be able to deliver, drive through a lot of pressure. So I wouldn't use this as a radiator fan unless you absolutely had to. Like if you had a fan die on your radiator and you're waiting for the replacement to come, you could slap this fan on it and it would do okay. But it's not designed for it and you're going to be losing a little bit of performance um, doing it that way. I also wanted to comment about one thing before we completely move on. My uh, triple pack arrived with a completely broken fan. So I... Don't think I have overall concerns for it overall um, about the fragility, but um, I just want to show that off because it did arrive broken, and uh, you know companies need to be held accountable for it. 
So it's still like fully in pieces, but like attached, but you would never be able to use this on your computer case. First up is the case simulation test. This can be looked at it in two different ways. One is scientific, how good is this fan? And one is how does it actually perform in a more real world type scenario where it simulates different size computer cases based on how far away my anemometer was. The first one is the six inch mark, which is representative of a small form factor case, basically ITX motherboard, six inches away from it, assuming an air cooler or the short throw distance, like having a fan blowing up into the GPU uh, in a top to bottom airflow type design or in a inverted case where the air blows down into the GPU, something along those lines. That would be the key data point you wanna look at. Next is the 9-inch mark. Again, this is represented for air coolers. For water cooling, um, we'd look at the data a little bit differently, and I will try to get into that a little bit later in this video. So that would be representative of 220 millimeter class fans in terms of the length of the case in that front-to-back airflow type design. So that would be, uh, be able to hold a standard ATX motherboard, but not really a GPU of greater length than that motherboard itself. Then we have the 11 inch mark, which is your standard mid tower cases. So think 320 millimeter class fans or a standard 360 AIO. Then we have the 14.5 inch mark, which is your truly large towers. My best representative is the Fractal Design Torrent. And think a case that can hold 340 millimeter class fans. So, how does it compare against, well, my control fan as well as other similar type fans like? The regular C12. Well, my control fan is this teal line. I do apologize. In future videos, I do change these to different symbols to make it a little bit easier, but this is kind of older despite coming out, well, now. Control fan is base three parts A12.5 to one part A14 to create a blended 130 millimeter class fan. So fans that rank over top of it, I consider to be good, better, best. Rain fans that rank underneath it, could be considered okay, but generally are not great case fans. So the TLC12C is underperforming for the most part. Wouldn't be a strong recommendation for a case fan. The only one that seems to do well is the TLS12. At 100% PW fan signaling, well, it is still underperforming my control fan, so it isn't doesn't get a strong recommendation here at uh, comparing it against other fans, again, back to noise normalized results. Well, it is right here in this highlighted yellow line. You can see that it does okay in smaller in smaller cases, so the six and the nine inch mark, but in bigger towers, it doesn't really get a strong recommendation, although it does end up doing okay at the 14 point five mark, but there just are better fans at a similar price point. So it's really, do you love this RGB? Next, at 100% PWM fan signaling, it is underperforming. This is just a cross subsample selection. Some fans spin at higher RPM, some fans spin at low, about the same RPM. So RPM does matter. It does give you better maximums, but even amongst similar RPM fans, it's not doing overall all that well. Next, how does it do in airspeed versus decibels? The nine inch mark was chosen because I need air speeds over 0.5 meters per second, and he gave me the best bet while still being not at the closest mark, so it allowed for more air dissipation. So it really focuses on which fans create a better focused airflow in general. But you could do this kind of test for any of the data points. And at uh, lower RPM PWM fan singles, it does really quite well actually. But once you get after, after the 20, 30, 40% PWM fan signal mark, it just doesn't have the same sort of legs as other fans. It doesn't create a strong an airflow overall. Next, we're taking a look at the fan at through the CPU air cooler. My cooler is the Noctua U12A. It's sort of a good middle ground between older style air coolers to more modern ones that have a higher fin density. Actually, it does have a fairly high fin density and it's fairly thick. I have started adding radiator testing since I recently acquired one. Thanks to you, my viewers, uh, subscribing to this channel, hitting those likes, uh, joining me as a Patreon and YouTube memberships. That has really come a long way and helped me acquire radiator. Uh, this one was not tested in the radiator. However, the few fans that I have tested thus far have had similar air speeds 
as going through my air cooler. Now in the future, I hope to be able to add thermal testing. I just don't have the finances for this channel to be able to afford a test system yet. So hopefully one day we'll incorporate that sort of testing into well this methodology. Anyways, we got the control fan once again, and the first graph over here on the left side is the fan or RPM versus air speed. So it's a blade efficiency graph. So it's how much air does it move at a given RPM. And it is a little bit better than my control fan. The um, theoretical control fan because it doesn't actually exist in reality. In terms of that noise efficiency though, well at lower RPMs it's very similar, but as we get higher and higher in RPM and the noise level climbs, it just isn't as efficient at moving air for a given noise level. How does it rank amongst other fans, noise normalized results? Well, it is towards the bottom, but mind, um, this do is only looking at noise, it's not the RPM. So all, they're, they're all equal in terms of that noise value. And it's based off the Atovings Drive, once again, running at around 1,300 RPM, if I recall correctly. So there are just better choices, but it comes down to price of the fan, which we'll get into later, and whether or not you like the RGB. So that is up to you to decide. At 100% PDL fan signaling, well, RPM fat matters, and the higher RPM fans will rank better, but amongst similar RPM fans, it's doing okay. There are ones that move more air for the same, actually less noise level, like the TLS-12. So it all depends on that RGB, I guess. In terms of uh, airspeed that it moves versus a decibel rating. And once again, remember that decibels is um, not linear. So every 10 decibels is a doubling in noise volume. So if you're looking at 5 to 15 decibels, 15 is twice as loud as 5 decibels. So the TLC-12C is ranked towards the bottom. It's just not particularly noise efficient overall. And one of the better choices, actually, uh, right here, is the Unifan P28. It's ranked best out of the fans that I decided to do in this cross sub Subselection, and if you are looking for best of the best, I do have a number of best of the bests on my channel, so you can look at those videos to see what fans you should actually buy. Now into CFM testing. This is my least favorite test because it's basically scientific uh, testing, so it doesn't actually get you any viable information for normal case usage. You can sort of use it for uh, airflow into a, a mini ITX case because CFM kind of matters more, but this isn't a pressure scenario. You need would need some restriction behind it to really do that. And you can't really use it for radiators because it, again, doesn't have that restriction. And high CFM good doesn't isn't actually what you need in case airflow. It actually how the airflow pattern uh, propagates into the case that matters more. So if you're building your own at-home wind tunnel, this is a very valid test. Anyways, um, you got RPM versus CFM. The TLC-12C does really bad in this test. I don't know specifically why, it just does really bad in this test, as well as in that noise level versus that airspeed. Has a rank among other fans? At the bottom, let's just move on. At 100%, at the bottom. So let's just move on. Noise versus that airspeed, or CFM I should say, at the bottom. The regular C12 did a lot better. I don't know if I got a lemon for this test where the motor in it just couldn't create enough torque, but it didn't do very well. All right, now we're on to value proposition. So this fan came in a triple back for $13. That means price per fan is $4.30. That is a very cheap price. And for the six inch mark and noise normalized testing, it is the best value because it is dirt cheap to buy these fans. That's why it ranks well. So that's how value works. It's not uh, absolute performance, it is that performance per dollar. So a cheap enough fan will do well in this test. So if you're on an ultra tight budget, it's kind of the way to go. But if you got any extra money to spend, I do recommend you find out which fan actually will suit your needs the best, that fits your budget. At 100%, well, same sort of thing. How about the 11 inch mark? Well, it's not the best at uh, noise normalized testing, but at 100% it is. Um, 
at noise normalized, it's slightly beat out by the TLS-12, but it's an excellent value, despite not being that good at performance. So take that for what you will. So again, this reiterates my point to just be careful what you're buying. So value doesn't mean it's going to be the best option. CFM testing, let's just move on. It doesn't do too well here. And the cooler, it's the best. So um, take that for what you will. Again, it's not the best at raw performance. It is just the best value. And that brings us to the end of the video. At the end of every video, I like to show off my raw data. This raw data does belong to me. If you want to use it for your own personal use, you may go ahead and do so, like creating your own graphs and charts. But if you're going to use any sort of video, publication, written journal, I do ask the rec that you reference me and my channel since I'm the one who generated it. Um, this channel is growing. I'm trying to improve add more testing to it. I know I've got a bunch of comments asking for thermal testing. Unfortunately, I don't have a test system at the time of filming this video. I hope to acquire one thanks to viewers like you all joining me as YouTube or Patreon members. Right now, this channel is completely unpaid, unsponsored on anything. It's just uh, me funding it. And like all things, there's a limit to what I can do with um, this channel at this time. So if you like what I'm doing, like the idea of what I'm doing, want to see this channel grow, I ask that you hit, give me a super thing about joining as a member because it really, really does go a long way in allowing me to buy the fans, test the fans, spend the time that it takes to do all this testing and creating the graphs and the videos and everything like that. Uh, anyways, thank you very much for watching my video. I hope to see you join me next time on Computer Tech and More, and I'll see you around.